Hello and welcome to the 2009 AN Annual Meeting. My name is Jay McBride. I'll be the moderator for the press briefing today. I'd like to welcome our esteemed panelists who are joining us today, as well as members of the press in attendance and also via conference call. Today we welcome three researchers to discuss their work. After each of our guests has discussed their research, we'll have a few moments for questions. First by those in attendance here in the press room, followed by those on the conference call, time permitting. Please wait to be identified before asking your question if you're here in the gallery. Our next presenters uh, are Dr. Vittorio Martinelli and Dr. Giancarlo Comi, authors of the abstract entitled Incidents of Acute Leukemia in Multiple Sclerosis Patients Treated with Mitroxin Drone, a Multicenter Retrospective Italian Study. This abstract is embargoed until 7 p.m. Pacific, Thursday, April 30th, 2009. Welcome, doctors. Thank you. Good morning. So, um, mitoxantron is uh, an immunosuppressive drug. Worldwide, we used uh, for uh, aggressive multiple sclerosis. In uh, 2000, it was approved for in, by FDA for uh, worsening uh, secondary progressive uh, relapsing remitting or progressive relapsing uh, MS. In mitoxantron, may induce uh, DNA damage by interfering with uh, mm, repairing mechanisms and uh, inducing uh, chromosomal uh, abnormalities uh, or translocation. Uh, the use of mitoxantron requires a careful uh, knowledge and observation or both short-term and long-term side effects. A particularly attention has been done to the therapy-related leukemia. So far, the incidence of acute leukemia after treatment with mitoxantron in multiple sclerosis patients is reported by a few studies. And the incident rate was, in the first study, about one patient with acute leukemia every 1,300 patients treated with mitoxantron. More recently, the second French study reported two patients with leukemia out of 800 patients treated with mitoxantron. So it's about 0.25, the incidence rate. Uh, in uh, the incident rate in patient with uh, uh, tumor treated with mitoxantron is higher than this data. It ranges from 1% to 12%. But usually this kind of patient have been treated with uh, other kind with mitoxantron and other kind of chemotherapy or radiotherapy. In Italy, we... Um, it is estimated that the incidence rate of, of leukemia, acute leukemia in the general population is about one patient every 1,000 um, person with the same age, in the same range of age. So the primary objective of our study is to determine the actual risk of developing acute leukemia after a treatment with mitoxantron in patient treated with at least one single cycle and followed up for at least one, month, one, one year. The second, um, our secondary objective uh, was to detect the possible clinical, demographical, or uh, uh, expositive factors related to the onset of acute leukemia in uh, the patient. So we organized a retrospective uh, epidemiological studies and uh, we, uh, 35 Italian centers participate to these studies, collecting uh, among 3,000 patients uh, treated uh, with mitoxantron since 1999 up to now, up to the last year. Uh, so far, we observed 21 cases of acute leukemia, and uh, um, eight of whom died. 
the mortality rate in our group of patients was 38%. It is not so different from the data reported in our previous reports, which ranges from 25 to 36. Only two patients of our group of patients who died had previously other immunosuppressive drug other than mitoxantron. The cumulative incidence of uh, acute leukemia in our patient was 7.4 cases every 1,000 patients treated. In other words, one patient with acute leukemia every 135 patients treated with mitoxantron. While the incidence rate was 0 0.16 acute leukemia cases, per 1,000 patients treated observed for one month. Uh, another, important second, another important thing that we observed in our study is that uh, the risk of developing acute leukemia was those related. And this, is, uh, this study was the first one in the world to detect uh, this uh, relationship. So if we uh, decide to a different cutoff with the cumulative dose, we can observe that patients receiving a cumulative dose, a lifetime cumulative dose greater than 82 milligram, they have a risk of 2.7 higher than patient receiving a dose of mitoxantral lower than 82 milligrams. While uh, if we increase the cutoff to 95 or again to 110 milligram, the risk of developing, uh, of developing acute leukemia is in this patient 3.9, so very higher than patient with the lower dose. In conclusion, uh, the potential risk of secondary acute leukemia as well as uh, the dose related the cardiotoxicity and the impairment of fertility, should be carefully considered against the potential benefits of uh, uh, mitoxantron treatment on every single patient. So from one side, we have the risk of the disease with uh, an aggressive uh, course, which have uh, higher risk to develop a significant impairment and disability for the patient. On the other side, we had the risk related to the treatment. We all know that there is no treatment without any adverse event, but we have to know the real risk the patient had to, could have after the treatment. Uh, considering mitoxantron treatment in MS patients with an aggressive disease, a therapeutic strategy based on exposure to lower dose could be considered. Moreover, since so far, we have no uh, single test who can uh, uh, detect the susceptible patient to acute leukemia and uh, no demographic or clinical uh, data could be related to the future development of acute leukemia. Another important thing is that all the patients already treated with mitoxantron have to be had to undergo a careful and prolonged hematological uh, follow-up for at least six years. The patient who had in our group the patient who developed leukemia after uh, the longest period, after the end of the treatment, was about six years after the end of the treatment. But we don't know up to now which is the, uh, the, 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 the duration of the period at risk of developing leukemia. So we have to follow up this patient for a longer period in order to detect uh, to the, an early detection of the uh, changement in uh, the blood cell count and uh, to detect the possible changes which are uh, the early um, 
which, which um, are co co correlated to the early development of acute leukemia. Thank you.